What's up everybody, Blockus here, and today I'll show you how to build a much better multi-floor elevator with call buttons to each floor. Not only that, I've simplified the design and addressed all previous elevator issues so you won't have this thing stopping midway or doing any weird things like that. As you can see, I can click the up and down buttons as usual to move this elevator. And if I'm on any other floor, I can just press the call button and the elevator will come to me. And this thing can be expanded vertically as much as you want, you only need some extra redstone links and sequence gear shifts. So let's jump right into it. First we'll build the main column. I will highlight the floors with a different color and we'll set each floor to be 3 blocks tall. And I'll show you later how you can set this up with different floor heights. It's super easy and doesn't require any changes to the design. Now. Right above the final floor, we'll place our rope pulley and build a simple floor under it with super glue in the second hand. This way we'll have the floor ready to go. Next we're gonna set up a belt that's 6 blocks wide and we're gonna want a shaft in each block. And once those are added, we'll go ahead and connect 6 sequence gear shifts to the shafts. Now before we set these up, let's connect the shaft to each one of them and connect them with a belt. So now I can connect my motor here and be done with this part. Obviously you're gonna need to hook this up to a survival friendly rotation source, but it can be anything because there's no speed requirement on this elevator, unlike the first one I've shown you. Now here's how we're gonna set the sequence gear shifts. We'll set the first one to piston 4 meters and keep the arrow pointing out. And we'll go ahead and set the second one to 4 meters, piston and the arrow pointing the other way. And now we'll go ahead and set the next one to 8 meters with the arrow pointing out, and then the next one with 8 meters with the arrow going the other way. And finally, we'll set the final two to 12 meters with the arrows also going both ways. So there will be one going out and one going in. These are basically our instructions gear shifts and we will not need to change them at all. And if your floors are a different height, let's say 5 blocks instead of 4, you'll just need to change the sequence gear shifts to 5 and its multiplier, so it will be 5, 10, 15, etc. And that's all you'll need to do. And now that this is done, we're gonna place 6 observers facing out, and then we'll place 6 blocks in front of them. So now we've actually set up inputs for these blocks so we can use them whenever we need them. And now it's time to set up the buttons. First we'll start by the up-down buttons. And I do recommend that you stop the motor at this point to prevent some things from breaking. We'll set up a redstone link for each one of these first two sequence gear shifts. And now we'll hook these up with the up down button. Now there's a note for any of you who've tried to build my previous elevator design. Following this design up to this point to build a very simple elevator is actually a lot better and will not have any issues unlike the previous design which used a pulse extender and a gear shift and those caused a lot of problems. Now since the first sequence gear shift brings the elevator down by a single floor, we're gonna place this redstone link on each down button. And then we'll place the second redstone link on each up button. Now let's give this thing a quick test to make sure that everything is working correctly. Okay, and it looks like we have no issues so far. And now it's time to set up our floor calling buttons. And this column that I'm building right here is going to hold them. Obviously, you can turn this into a frame or anything you'd like, so let me just place the buttons on each floor and we'll be done with this part. The next part might look a bit strange, but it will make perfect sense. With the elevator on the top floor, we're gonna use super glue and we're gonna attach a column of blocks to the side of the floor with one block away from the frame and we'll go all the way down to the ground. And we're also gonna build it up on top. For this elevator, we're gonna go 10 blocks above, but this number isn't actually gonna hurt if it's wrong, we can just break it and fix it at the very end without any issues. Now since I'm building this in the void, I won't need to do anything else. But when you build this in a regular world, you're gonna need to dig under this column two blocks so that you can ensure that this column is going to go down into the ground whenever the elevator is on the first floor and we're gonna need the second block because we're gonna be placing redstone links on this column which we also want to move with it. And now it's time for our final step. We're gonna go up to our sequence gear shifts and define a code for the last four redstone links. 
So I'm gonna place four redstone links here and choose different unique codes for each one of them. Now with the elevator all the way up on the top floor, we're gonna place the redstone link that will trigger the sequence gear shift set to bring us down 12 blocks right here on the ground floor. On the floor above, we'll place the one that brings us down 8 blocks. And next we'll simply place the one that brings us down 4 blocks. And as you remember, bringing us down means the arrow in the sequence gear shift is facing outwards. This might be the other way around for you if you end up placing your elevator facing a different direction, so make sure you try it and find out which way you're going at the very beginning. And since this is the floor we're currently on, we're not gonna place anything here. Now we'll press the down button and when the elevator gets down, we'll place the redstone link to bring the elevator up 4 blocks simply because it's right under us. Next we'll bring the elevator down again and we'll place the redstone link that brings the elevator up 8 blocks. And finally we'll bring it down again and add the redstone link that brings it up 12 blocks. And believe it or not, we're all done now. Since the redstone links are moving with the elevator, the correct redstone link is always going to be aligned with the call button. So wherever you happen to be, you'll be able to call your elevator. And of course make sure that when you dig under the elevator for this column that you dig two blocks wide so the redstone links can go into the ground as well. And this is the end of this tutorial. I think that this is simple enough to be built in survival so I'll probably have something like it in my mechanic crafters base at some point because you know things aren't moving really fast over there. And of course you can find the schematic attached in the video description below. Other than that I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.